everyone, welcome to the Captain Drone YouTube channel. My name is Steve and in my hand I have a drone by Darwin FPV. This is the Fold 84. Why is this drone so amazing? Well, it's not amazing because it's brand new because it has been on the market for a few months. But what is amazing about it and what caused me to review it or do this review is that when I saw it in other videos, I saw that it's foldable and it folds up into a tiny little package that you could fit into your pocket. I'm probably showing you some video right now of the folding mechanism. All in all for what you get that's a pretty cool design and it's under 250 grams and it's a long range fpv drone what does that mean <laughs> that means that with long range you should be able to fly far although mine is analog so i don't know if i can get the distance but it means it flies for a long time so they say on the package and the instructions and everything else that you might get 20 minutes of flight time with this baby i don't know i 20 minutes that's craziness to get 20 minutes you have to put over a 1000 milliamp hour our lipo battery 3s i only have 850 3s batteries so i don't think i'm getting 20 minutes also it says if you put lithium ion batteries on here you can get up to 30 minutes of flight time that's insane and pretty cool it's got gps rescue in the back which is a nice touch now there's probably a few more things i want to tell you about this so uh, how about we go to indoor steve he'll tell you a few more things then come back out to me Yes, I'm Indoor Steve and I'm going to tell you all about the Darwin Fold 84 super fast. Here we go. The reason the name is the Fold 84 is because the props, which are gem fan, are 4 inch props. So if they make another version even smaller, I don't know, maybe put 2.5 inch props, which are popular, then it would be called the Fold Ape 25. As I hold it in front of the camera, you can see it is a dead cat design. That means the arms up here go outwards so that they're not in the frame of the camera for filming. This drone without a battery weighs under 250 grams. So you can keep it under 250 grams depending on the size of battery you place on it. Now what's interesting is that Darwin FPV are known for making economical drones. Their drones are all budget drones they cost next to nothing and some people have really good experiences with them and other people not so good experiences but this one is pretty interesting because in this design you can get it as i have here i just have a cat x ant analog camera in the front so this is the lowest cost version my output video power is 600 milliwatts which is really decent you can also jump to the digital camera and get a wasp camera up front so that's good if you have the old dji version 1 goggles or version 2 fpv goggles or you can even can get an avatar camera up there but you'll need the avatar goggles or you can get a dji 03 super expensive more costly than this entire drone system you can get that and for receivers in here you have a choice of elrs crossfire or just dji now the website also says that they have tuned this little drone so there's no vibrations no jello in the video I find that hard to believe because you fold the arms in and out. And when you fold the arms in and out, say you have them off by one millimeter on this side, two millimeters on this side, because you don't fold them just perfectly straight when they're out, well, then you're going to get jello because the motors are what cause the jello. So I think to get no jello, you have to have it like absolutely perfect. Speaking of the motors, they are the weirdest looking motors I've ever seen. They look like they come off a DJI drone. And I think on the website, they even say they come off a DJI drone, although I don't know any dji drones with motors that small other than the mini but they do say they're 1504 motors at 3800 kv and if you're wondering about the flight controller inside it is a darwin flight controller at 15 amps it's an f411 so the next thing to do is show you my flight footage i've taken this out for a flight and giving you my personal opinion as i'm flying it then i'm going to show you what comes in the box if you get this little thing and then finally come back to me and i'll give you my final thoughts on the positives and negatives about this quad here we go all right you're back out to me and i just want to show you that today i'm going to be flying this with my radio master zorro that's why i have my radio master hat on this is an elrs radio because my drone is the elrs version also because the camera up front is analog it means i need analog fpv goggles so i have my old fat shark analog fpv goggles now in order for you to see what i see i can record the video in my analog fpv goggles however if you've ever watched any of my videos fat sharks when they record video it's really bad so the video you're going to see that i'll show you is going to be really bad but what i see in my eyeballs is much better so to help you out the drone is designed to put a camera on it so i put a little insta 360 go to camera up front so that will record some video so it doesn't look so bad and the last thing i want to say is that it's very windy at the moment Moment. this is probably one of the worst days to fly this because not only is it windy it's also really cold and the sun keeps going in and out because it's pretty cloudy today so when you see sun great when you don't see sun image not so great but this is a review video because i was curious about this i think i was more curious about this than anybody else so i'm pretty much reviewing this for myself so i'm going to take it for a flight now and tell you what i think
<laughs> it's cold on the hands today. Plugging it in. Hear that beautiful sound? She starts up. Okay, our drone's down there. It's all set to record, so I'm gonna go and grab the remote. Oh, this is not gonna be a long flight for me. It's much too cold, so this is gonna be a short flight. Let's find the video channel. I think we're on uh, race band one. There we are, race band one. Take a flight before I freeze to death here. Here we go. Let's go fly out forward, and then we'll spin around and take a look at me over here. There I am down there. Just watch out for trees. It flies much faster than I expected. I expected it to fly very, very slow, but uh, yeah, here, let's bring it by me again a little bit over on the side, try not to hit the tree that's beside me. It, uh, yeah. So first, first impressions are it uh, is much faster. I thought for a long range drone, it would have a very slow uh, speed and also it would conserve battery power, but uh, let's go over here. All right, let's just go fly around my little beach here before my hands freeze. The video transmission seems okay. Uh, it does say that I took off before getting satellites, so my GPS rescue won't work. If you look at the top of my screen, see all those zeros? It's still searching for the GPS. It doesn't know where home is, so as soon as it gets the GPS, I'm going to have to land it. So I don't want to go too far, because if GPS rescue kicks in, I don't know where this thing's going to end up. Let's go follow the road, stay away from the power lines. Normally, if you're going to fly a drone with a GPS, uh, you let it sit and grab the satellites before you take off. But I was so frozen that I just wanted to get in the air and go fly before my fingers froze. It's pretty good, though. It can uh, travel a good distance around the beach. No problem. I'm still getting a video signal. You can see the water looks a little rough because, well, it is uh, pretty windy out. And I should also mention that for the wind, this thing seems to handle no issue. I don't see any problems with flying in the wind. It's uh, cruising really well. There's a bird. What I'll do then is just to make it fair for everybody, I will go and land this and I will let it get the satellites. The wind is just a blowing. Oh my lord. Let's bring it down as close as we can to the landing pad. Descent. There we are. Okay, so the drone is landed and I'm going to let it get the satellites and uh, let's see if we have any. I have none. There's no satellites happening. Okay, so this is pretty slow at capturing satellites. A few minutes later. All right, it's too cold out here. I'm going to fly anyways. We're not going to use the GPS rescue today then. Brr. Now I know some people who love Darwin FPV are going to be like, Steve, you should have stood out there for like 10 or 20 minutes and got the GPS satellites, but I'm too cold. I am not waiting for the GPS signal. Not today. It's the year 2024. Drones should get the satellites immediately. So I'm guessing either I've done something wrong or there's something wrong with my drone and it doesn't capture satellites. But anyways, let's go fly. The worst thing is I have to fly with my gloves off. I will say it flies well, so I'll give it that. But uh, yeah, as for satellites, uh, pretty bad, pretty bad. Or maybe it's just my version. All right, so a lot of people want to know if in the wind these little things can do little flips and rolls nice and slow. There we go, beautiful one there. Can I do the same thing, but this time in reverse, going really fast and... Well, there we go, that was with a bit of screaming and of course, around and around i'm just doing the basics for flips and rolls freestyle uh because a lot of times if i do anything crazy with freestyle i seem to lose viewers seems like when i make a youtube video i can look and see what people skip through and people tend to skip through parts where the motion is too fast so i have to keep it nice and slow so the only negative on this is the gps satellite on the version i have sucks or once again as i mentioned i've done something wrong in my setup and i have not activated i do have a switch on my remote that i've active activate it for GPS, but I'm not going to hit that because it doesn't know where home is. So let me tell you some positives with this baby. It's under 250 grams. It flies for a very long time. The analog image signal that's coming back to my uh, fat shark goggles is actually above average. I don't have any issues here with signal penetration with all the interference that comes from some of these little buildings down below me. It is in the wind. Uh, it seems to have no issues with flying in the wind. You know, the wind's knocking it around, but it's doing quite well. So honestly, for the price that they're asking for this little quad, and it's foldable, and it does everything it does, it's pretty darn decent. From this video, does it look like I'm freezing? Because I am freezing out here. My heads are just frozen. Getting, the, getting all the wind right off the water. It is very easy to fly, I will say that. Slow it down right here. There we go, I can get the hover looking at me. Come on over. And this is in the wind. So the wind is like pushing it around. And this is me holding it in the wind. So 
You know, it gets a lot of points for a lot of things except for that friggin' GPS. All right, my fingers are much too cold. I've got to bring this back. So where am I? I'm over here someplace. Let's go over here. Watch out for these little light bulbs. And come on over to me. I'm going to land it right here. I'm going to turn on the GPS function. I'm going to see if maybe I have to turn the GPS on. Decide. Okay, I turned GPS on. So let's see what it does. Does it grab the GPS now? No, nothing. Okay, I'm much too cold. I got to go in. Now, the next thing I want to show you is what you get in the box if you get this little guy. So check it out. This is the box your Darwin FPV drone comes in. Inside the box, you'll find a set of stickers, a battery strap, your drone in a nice pouch, followed by a micro Phillips screwdriver with some screws, and followed by a product support card, zip ties, and more screws. Removing the drone from the pouch, you can see it's in a folded state. When you unfold the carbon fiber arms of the drone, you have the option of inserting screws to hold the arms tightly in position. Next, to lock the antenna in place, first insert it into the mounting hole, then tighten it in place with a zip tie. Next, add the battery strap. Total weight of the drone is 134 grams. The battery I used in this review was a 3S 850mAh LiPo battery, and you can see when I add it, I'm still under 250 grams. All right, you're back to me, and I'm gonna give you my positives and negatives. Let's start with the positives. It's economical. This is one of the lowest price quads I've seen for what you get. You get an awful lot for very little money spent when you buy the analog version. It's also foldable at a really good price. I don't know very many FPV drones that are foldable, so that's a positive. In my flight test, I found the speed of this drone to be quite fast. I didn't expect that because a lot of times long range drones are more economical in the motor conservation of power, so they don't fly super fast, but this did quite well. Also in the wind, it was pretty windy that day, cold wind too and this didn't even notice the wind it flew so well as for handling very responsive easy to control a beginner could fly this it's so easy to control and if you're into fpv flying this seemed to be quite flickable it responded well to bouncing around in the skies slow turns fast turns it did it well for the image recorded in my fat chart goggles it looked pretty good to my eyeballs now what you saw the recorded version wouldn't look as good because it really gets downgraded when it's recorded but not only to me was the image good but also the output power seemed to be quite decent. I could fly at a good range and I was still getting good video signal. And as the website says, you do get a long flight time. With my little 850 battery, if I flew conservatively, you know, I would probably get my 12 minutes of flight time with the 850. And the last positive is it's not a one trick pony. So you can get different camera options up front, all at a good price. You can get different receivers, which is pretty good. Now we're going to jump into the negatives. First negative, let's start with the receiver. So it is the LRS on here, but I was pretty surprised. I was trying to bind this to my controller thinking it was just normal ELRS, but it's not. It's ELRS SPI, so you have to go into Betaflight Configurator to bind it to your controller. Is that a negative? Yes, for some people. Some people would prefer to have the ELRS separate, a separate ELRS module, than have it built right in on the flight controller deck. Another negative is there were vibrations in the video. I thought I locked these arms perfectly. I put screws in here to lock them so they would stay still, but you could see when I filmed with my little Insta360 Go that there was getting a little bit of jello in the sides and stuff. And the camera on top will show it. Analog cameras don't show jello. So when I show you the analog footage, you don't see it. But when I show you footage from an external camera, you will notice jello. So there was jello in here, which means it's caused by the motors and the props and the arms not being perfectly straight because I folded them. And the last negative is the GPS. So I did find out the problem with my GPS. I stuck it in my backyard so it would get satellite signals. It did not work. So I thought something's wrong. I checked all the connections. It's all okay. So then I thought, ah, oh, I wonder if it's that old problem where the video output signal kills the GPS. So I went back in the beta flight. I reduced the output power from 600 milliwatts down to 100 milliwatts and uh, the GPS worked. So that's what it is. It's all the interference coming here onto this little GPS unit. So you have to reduce the power to get that to work, which kind of defeats the purpose of a long range drone. The only fix is pretty much to take the GPS and to move it elsewhere on the drone. So those positives and negatives are my opinion based on my observations of this little quad. 
If you go watch somebody else's review, they might have different observations and different opinions based on their flights. But to summarize everything, it's pretty darn decent value. and Pretty darn decent value for what you get for the price you pay. It's very inexpensive. So with all that said, I'm going to put links to this product below. I know it's available on the Banggood website with my discount code, so you might be able to get it at a pretty good price. I know it's available at many other stores. I'll put some of those links below. You might be able to get different options checking out the other stores. If you have questions on this little Darwin FPV Fold 8.4, then post your questions below and I'll get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, well then please give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you in a future review with many more reviews. Until then, I say bye!